deal where I bring in the team over. We happen to be adding agents. I'm still, my business is still running. I'm getting referrals. But I think the biggest thing for me is uh, I fought the urge to make a move for a long time. And finally, when I did, I mean, it was, it was carefully calculated. It was carefully calculated. And uh, once I finally made that move and stepped out in faith of, you know, good things to come and networking with the right people, i am just been seeing signs left and right, man. So I just want to share that with everybody is, you know, when you're scared of making big decisions, fearful of making big decisions. Um, for me, it's just been nothing but good. Um, I'm seeing signs left and right that are just reinforcing why I'm doing what I'm doing. And uh, if I stayed in my small mindset, in my comfort zone, I wasn't ever going to break through. So I'm just confident that things are happening and I'm excited. That's awesome, bro. That's awesome. We got to lead, you know, lead by faith and not fear, man. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of uncertainties with everything. Right. But we got to live by faith, bro. And just trust that, you know, there's a bigger plan for us. So I'm glad you're doing that, bro. And it's good yeah. things are going to come. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks, Let's man. go around guys. Give me a couple more positive focus. Just tell me something good. So, so I'll do a positive focus. And I know last week we talked, uh, we left off the meeting with uh, some social media content, right? We made a challenge for everyone. And I challenge you guys to post a few videos, this and that. So I took it upon myself to get really active on that. Um, and I got a lot of good feedback. Um, a lot of people started engaging in it. Uh, and uh, I know we spoke about this yesterday, but someone that I met in person that I knew from Instagram, they're like, hey, what's your actual name? I, I just know you by Realtor Maudi. So I ended up branding myself, you know, through all that content I've been posting as Realtor Maudi. So first word, Realtor. Next is my nickname. But <laughs> it's, I, I was juice for about that. You know, that means, you know, it's making a difference. That's my positive. That's awesome, bro. That's awesome. Yeah, we set that challenge out with our team, two videos last week. And we had probably about 98% of the team do it, which was, which was awesome because it was a big step up from the previous week. And, and the uh, response is just, it's crazy. I mean, we're still getting responses off those videos because those videos are, are living on your social media pages and people are seeing them and it takes a while for them to get out there. But that's awesome, man. Good, good job on that. Uh, let's go. A couple more, guys. Positive focus. Tell me something good. What's going good? Henry Kitts, Jose Valle. What's up, brother? Yeah, good, good. Um, yeah, I just want to um, piggyback on the, the videos I you know, I know that you mentioned it last week to do two videos in this last week and since last uh, Wednesday. So I was able to get on like this morning and kind of do my second one. Um, but it was something that that challenged me because I don't do a lot of a lot of video, which I know I, I need to do more of it. But it challenged me to really get out of my comfort zone and to do it and just put it out there. And um, and I did have some people that responded and, and were like, oh, that's great information. Or, I didn't know that. Or so. Thank you for, you know, for putting that challenge out there to us. There we go, bro. I saw your videos, bro. Tag me in those videos. It gets me excited when I'm like, all right, people are doing stuff, man. So it's awesome. Uh, so good job on that. Let's go a couple more and then we'll get into some meat and potatoes. Uh, positive focus. Tell me something good. What's going good for you right now? This last week. I put a uh, Zahar here. I don't, why does my name say Blanca? The heck? Um, I put out three offers yesterday. I got two accepted already, and I'm in verbal counters with the third. Whoa, damn, three in a day. Let's go. All right, we're going to get that third one locked in. Got this. That is amazing. Good job, Z. Killing it. All right, all right. It's got me fired up. Uh, let's go. Positive focus. Let's get a couple more. Come on, don't be shy. Show your faces. Let's go. Enrique, I got a positive thing. Um, you've been harping on video. I haven't been active on video on IG, but I have been active on video on my YouTube channel. And I'm at 70 subs, getting close to the first 100 subscribers. And it's crazy because I'm getting calls all over the country from people wanting rentals. And I'm like, hey, I, I'm not a rental agent, but you know, I can send you over what we have on our MLS system for a lease. If you need anything else, let me know. And then I just add them to the database. And uh, so calls are coming in from all over the place uh, and people asking about the city where I live and this and that, because I'm focusing on Long Beach. So I do see the power of video helping. So it's like a 24 hour salesperson that's working when you're not. So I just wanted to put that out there. I'm close to hundred subs. That's awesome, bro. That's a good milestone, bro. We'll get to that hundred subs. And 
think about that. How cool is that? You just said 24 hour salesperson working for you, right? So you create, you dedicate the time up front to do that video. Now that video is working for you forever, right? So, um, and that kind of gets my wheels turned. It's like, all right, now how can you take that to the next level, right? Like if you're really focusing on Long Beach, how can you now become the mayor of Long Beach, right? Like your video should be all around what Long Beach is and what the different spots to go hang out, the cities, the neighborhoods, the suburbs. Like there's so much, there's so much room where you could take that, you know, and just really expand on, on what you're doing, which I'm sure you already are, but that's awesome, bro. You're getting that traction. So congrats on that. Let's get one more positive focus. Give me something. Tell me something good. I got one. So, so today I came in the office and we, we've, we've been in our location for probably about, I don't know, maybe 12 years. And so our first location, we had a, a water guy come by and, and set us up with the water service. And today the water, same water guy came in and trying to, he switched companies. So he's trying to sell us another, another water company. And so I, I spoke with them. I had his number saved in my phone. You know, we remembered each other and I asked him, I go, Hey, listen, if you have any real estate or mortgage questions, you know, definitely, you know, you know, lean on us. We definitely here to help. So I was able, long story short, I was able to set a $1.6 million listing appointment with him. He wants to sell his property in, in Redwood city within the next 12 months. So it's just, you know, it just shows the power of just, <laughs> Just keeping keeping connection, and it was cool because I had him underneath my my phone as Roger the Water Guy, right? And so, it was, and I showed him like, "Hey, Roger, I know who you are. You know, you helped me out a few years back, and you know, obviously, you know, we're we're opening another office. So I'm like, Roger, we got to get you set up on our office in in uh, off of Almaden and Cherry. He's like, Yeah, Jason, I'm ready to do it. So, so it was good good to kind of just see that relationship over 12 years come up, and and, and now we got the opportunity to help him out. Wow. That's freaking awesome, man. I remember Roger, the water guy, he's always switching companies and trying to get us to move to the next company, whatever. It's all good. Right. It's that relationship that's built. I don't know if the water tastes any different, but <laughs> give us money every time. Hey, but we keep buying it. We keep buying it. We keep buying it. We'll keep supporting Roger. Let's go, Roger. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, but think about that guys, right? This is a good point that you bring up. Anybody who you exchange money with, Anybody who takes your money, why can't you do business with them and, and you make some money with them, right? Like when you start thinking about it that way, like there's people that you've been committed to for years, your barber, your dry cleaner, your uh, CPA, whoever it might be, right? Massage therapist, whatever, right? Your therapist, right? <laughs> uh, there's people that are taking your money on a, on a daily basis that you're transacting with on a, on a daily or weekly or monthly basis. Why isn't that relationship reciprocal, right? Why aren't you looking at them as a source of, a, of referrals or a source of business? So um, a guy, um, Steve Bonafidi, I don't know if any of you guys know who he is. He's, they, they're, uh, they were a CSR. Uh, I remember I talked to them because they got listings all the time. They got so much business. And, and over the years, they built a big name for themselves. And I'm like, man, how are you getting so much business? And he goes, Anytime I sit with someone, if they take my money, I figure out a way to, to make money from them. He goes, that's my rule, you know? And he goes, and I just call people and he goes, and when I call them, I say, Hey, I'm calling about business, right? Like he calls people every day that he knows just people in his phone. He got everyone saved in there. That's his database. And he's like, Hey, it's Steve. I'm calling about business. You know, who do you know that's looking to sell? Who do you know that's looking to buy? And he goes, it's, it's become such a, a staple in what he does that they already know when he calls, they go, oh, you calling about business, right? It's almost like they already got a referral waiting for him because they know he's going to call, right? So it, it's just think about now how you can expand on all of that and like who the people that you come in contact with every single day that could potentially be your referral partners, right? Um, so that's awesome, man. There we go. $1.6 million listing. Let me know if you need help with that. <laughs> Got like five agents in the office all over it right now. Yeah, they were like me. <laughs> That's awesome. That's excellent. All right, guys, let's get it. Let's get it going. So before we start, guys, just remember the rules of our mastermind. The whole point of this mastermind, guys, is for us to learn from each other, for us to give back, for us to connect, build relationships. And most of all, take the information that you are learning today and go out and apply it and take some action. Right? You're not going to be able to do everything, but you're looking for those one or two nuggets, right? those areas that you need to improve on in your business 
that you can now, you know, go back and put put together an action plan. Um, we don't want this to be like those seminars where you just go and you listen and you take notes and then you go back to doing what you're doing. You don't change anything, right? Then you're just wasting an hour of your time today. So take action, guys. That's the biggest message I give you. Um, what does this cost? This doesn't cost anything. Remember, the way that you pay me for putting this together is you go take action and you pay it forward, right? Like help someone else out. There's someone else out, someone out there that is is struggling or was in, you know, the shoes that you're in or or is having some issues in their business. Help them out. Share what you're learning, you know, pay it, pay it forward. So that's all I ask from you guys. Um, to make this interactive, guys, and to, to give the most value, participate. If you guys could turn on your cameras, that's awesome. I encourage you guys to do that so we can see who we're talking to. And the more you can participate, the more you're going to get out of it. So, um, so let's kick it off, guys. So today, what I wanted to talk about, um, I kind of have a little theme, and then we can go into some questions, maybe just you know issues with your own business. But the theme that for today was I want to talk about systems, guys, systems that help you scale your business, right? Like, it's it's no doubt that we're all working hard, right? You know, the majority of us can raise our hand and say, hey, we're grinding, we're putting in the hours, we're working hard. But the reason why some people are accomplishing more and that same amount of time is because they have systems in place that help them scale or help them duplicate themselves um, and basically save time, right? Every day we're trading time for dollars. So I, it's important to think of your business from a standpoint of, you know, my, my business should be comprised of different systems that are going to allow me to be at more than one place at one time or to get more things done in the same amount of time right? Because we all have 24 hours in a day, but how we choose to use those 24 hours will make the difference in, in what happens in your business. So um, I want to talk about systems. And I know we got Jeremy on here who, who runs a high level team. And some of you guys are, are doing stuff at a high level. And maybe let's open up the conversation about maybe what are some, some key systems, maybe on just the most basic level, like what are some things that we're doing in our business today that save us time? right? What's saving us time, you know, and we can, it can go in different areas, right? It could be, you know, a simple system of like what you're doing when you meet with your clients. So I'm going to kick it off, you know, just talking about like our, our home buying system, right? Let's talk about that. So when we meet with, with a buyer, the system starts from when we got the lead, right? It doesn't just start when we have that appointment. The system goes all the way back from when we got that lead, when it entered our world, to what we do with that lead, to how we respond to that lead, to how it turns into an appointment. So let's maybe, let's, let's dive a little deep and, and let's just talk about what needs to happen when you first get a lead. So Jason, yeah, talk to yeah. me about what we're doing and what you're doing. You get a lead today, whether you're getting it from a, a referral, a friend, open house, a Zillow lead, What's happening with that lead from step one? Yeah, so so what we've done is we we've, we've eliminated, um, you know, relying immediately on on the agent responding to the lead. So one of the things that we do is, and again, a, a lot of the CRMs are doing this, but once the lead comes in, the CRM immediately sends out a text message, leaves a voicemail, and sends an email. Uh, so again, if the actual agent is in an appointment or showing property, it's, you know, it, that, that part of that process is already taken care of. So then when the lead responds, that the agent can be ready to go ahead and, and communicate with, with that, uh, that lead and set that appointment. So I think that, that is huge to set up. And that is, to me, that's really basic. I mean, we've been doing this for, for some time now. But again, in the beginning, what we realized is that some of you know some of the leads weren't being called back immediately or weren't being responded to quickly enough? So we took that away from the agent and allowed the system to handle it. So that was that was a big game changer. Um, and again, once the lead comes in, we also have a campaign where where it gives the the agent a list of items to to complete, uh, so that you know whether it's going to be to follow up with the clients or to um, you know, put them on a property search. So we have a list of things for the agent to do. So it's not, you know, they don't, they don't miss anything. And I think being very clear on that is, is extremely important. Um, I think also 
just, you know, the other part is for us as management to make sure we hold them accountable and checking that whole system, right? We just can't set it and forget it, guys. It, it's, that's something I think we've tried and we're like, all right, cool, we're, we're sending all these leads. Why aren't they converting? Well, you know what, they might have called them only once, but now we have a whole lead policy. We have a whole checklist that they need to go through. And for some reason, if, you know, some of the system works is if they don't respond to that lead, it gets removed from them and gets sent to another agent. So to me, that's one of the, one of the most basic things that if you don't have set up right now, I would definitely, you know, do that immediately. And that is, you know, that would work. We use FirePoint, uh, but I'm assuming all these, all these CRMs should be, should be doing that. Yeah, that, that's a good point that you make. It's, it's you can't just rely on you know the agent anymore and you can't rely on yourself right let's say you're just a solo agent because you're doing a million things you may be on you may be on an appointment showing a home or or meeting with the seller or whatever it might be and you have a lead that comes in or someone you know sends you a dm you know on social media you know it's like how are you responding to that lead in a timely manner and what steps are you following to ensure that every lead is being treated the same, right? That's a system right there. That's a lead management policy. Um, and it's, it's only when you deviate from some of those steps that you don't get the same result, right? Like we, we, can, we can get this down to where we're covering all of our bases. So like it's, it's hard for stuff to slip through the cracks at that point. Uh, Jeremy, you wanna chime in on anything on, on yeah. what you guys are doing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can talk about if you want to talk about leads um, or time management. I heard you talk about time management. Um, and unfortunately, I do have to, as you know, I got to bounce in eight minutes. Um, but I'm an open book, man. You know that, um, you know, time management where a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs and everybody on this is obviously an entrepreneur. They make a mistake of delegating what they think they should delegate. Um, and I like to kind of reverse that and say, focus on what you like doing, like what makes you happy, right? And so, I mean, you know, I run a, a, a decent sized team. We're onboarding three agents just this week. We'll be at over 33 agents here very soon, but I love recruiting. And I have somebody in my office who does recruiting now, but I'm still making those calls because I love it. So I make sure that in, in my schedule, there's time for me to do that. And so I really want to press that because a lot of entrepreneurs make that mistake where we delegate what we feel is a low end task. But if it's something you really like doing and it's a low end task, I think you should weigh that out. I'm not saying that should replace the high end tasks, but really look at what makes you happy. For some of us, we love showing homes. We love doing open houses. We love being in that environment. And for some of us, we can't stand that, right? For some of us, we love following up with leads. We love the challenge. We love the game. And for others, they don't. And so for time management, I, I just think that that's really important to recognize is like what gets you out of bed, what excites you, and how do you do more of that, whatever that is. That's awesome, man. No, I, I agree. And I, I think we got to look at, we got to look at what we're doing as we got to treat it like a business, right? Like you have to- yeah you have to get granular and really break things down and, and even think about it that way. Cause some people aren't, some people are just going through the motions every single day, right? Like come in, make calls, just show homes and like, just do realtor stuff. Right. But it's, are you really like looking at it, looking at it like a business? Are you breaking it down? Like Jeremy is saying and, and picking out, all right, what things am I good at? What things do I love doing? What stuff can I delegate? What sh stuff should I not delegate so that you can get more done in the same amount of time. So it's a great point. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, just focus on like what excites you, right? Like, like what makes you, what do you love about this industry? And I pray that there's something you love because I, I, I can tell you there's so many people that you think will be stressed out when you meet with them and talk to them. And I'm probably one of them because we've been on a tear of doubling our business. This will be the third year where we doubled our business. But when people meet with me, they're like, damn, dude, you're so relaxed. Like, I thought you were going to be stressed out and your phone was going to be ringing off the hook. And and so when you focus on the aspects that you love, it's game over, man. It is, it's a whole nother level because there's so many people in our industry that are doing parts of the business that they dread, that they don't want to do. And so if you can set your day up, whether you're an agent or you're a team operator, if you can set your day up where you get to spend like 75% of your day 
just doing the shit that you love that gets you excited it's just game over your energy is going to be higher people are going to see that they're going to want to be around you and they're going to want to know like man what what's up with with her what is why is she so happy all the time why is she kicking butt and so i think when we look at what we delegate in time management we we really want to look at that um, and then the other thing I want to say, you know, I shared this with my team yesterday, is that this is this is this is an incredible time. This is arguably the best real estate market in the history of real estate markets. Okay, and maybe there was one time where it was better, but this is in the top three period. And the problem we all have is that we have too many clients, too many customers, and not enough inventory. Like, just think about that. Like, you have too many people that want what you market and sell. And so this is a really good time to go all out in your business. And, you know, I don't know what that means. You know, maybe that's a move. Maybe that's, um, you know, doing some online spending, or maybe that's going just, just going nuts on open houses right now. We crushed some open houses this last weekend, the first weekend of open houses in our market. And we just absolutely crushed it. We had an average of three new, three new buyers um, per team member that did an open house this weekend. Each day they did an open house, they picked up three new buyers, three new clients getting pre-approved and walked them through the system. And so I say that not to impress, but just press upon like, it is an, an incredible opportunity. Um, and I just think that everybody here should recognize that. And this is a time to just go hard, get out of your own head, look at what others are doing on this mastermind and and take it in and go full throttle because it, it is just there's opportunity all over the place i mean we heard the story about the water guy right like yeah. you're so right like it, if your hairstylist is not sending you referrals and if you are not his or hers go to realtor you need to switch <laughs> if whoever does anything for you like my house cleaner refers me business you know like i otherwise they're out and so whoever you are paying, you're exactly right. You have to go interview them. Like I will interview my hairstylist. She sends me referrals. She's a client. But otherwise I'd go around and interview and be like, look, here's the deal. I, you know, I'm relationship based. I'm not transaction based. I know this sounds funny, but I love connecting people with people. And so whoever I, you know, connect with or do business with, I want to help them grow and, and build their business. I want to send my friends to you to get their hair done right? And I want that same relationship. And if, if we can do that, it's just going to be a really, really fun environment for us and a fun place to grow each other's business and enrich our relationship. And so, I mean, that is, that is a no brainer. Everybody should be doing that. And it's like, you're, that's, that's cool. You're having that conversation up front already, right? Obviously in a, in a motivating and inspiring way, but you're just, you're setting the stage for like, it's okay to send me business, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you have to like, yeah, you, you always have to train people to send you business, right? You always have to train them. Like my neighbors, I kept, I would invite them to my part, my client appreciation parties and everything that we do. And every time they come, they'd be like, just so you know, we don't want to sell our home. We love living here. I'm like, I know, I don't want you to move. You guys are, you know, your amazing neighbors. They're the sweetest couple in the world. Um, but it took like two years for them to understand that I'm asking them for referrals. Right. And so that's a big part. And it's good to get that up front. Just say, hey, look, you know, that I love relationships. I love introducing people to other people. I love helping people grow their business. And I want to do that for you. Would it be crazy for me to ask that in return of you? And I know you probably know nine other realtors and they always laugh. Right. Because everybody knows like a dozen realtors, <laughs> but you don't know a realtor that's sending you referrals. <laughs> but I, I can guarantee you, right, that most realtors are not having that conversation, right? So Yeah, because they're afraid. They're, they're afraid what people think. Um, and like, I mean, I just challenge everybody here, like, get out of that mind. Like, get out of your head, man. People don't think about you as much as you think they do. And we're freaking realtors. Like they're expecting us to say that, right? They're expecting us to follow up. They're expecting us to call and text and send those video messages. That's the kind of realtor you want to be around, right? right? It's like that's the kind of realtor you want to be around. And I love what you guys were talking about with the video challenge. That's great. I mean, listen, we all know this, dude, our consumer 
um, our buyers, our sellers, they are stalking our social media. They are stalking it. Trust me, they are sizing us up. Like that is your application, right? Like to work with somebody is your social media. And so you definitely want to stay on that. I, I didn't want to talk about video because we hear it every day on everything we do. But, um, <laughs> you know, just, just like you, Enrique, like, you know, the more you do it, the easier it gets, right? Like you're so confident and who you are in person is who you are on video because you do so much video. Yep. It's a skill you have to learn, man. You have to, you have to get comfortable with it over time. Awesome, man. A lot of, go lot cool. of nuggets right there. I'm inspired. I got I to gotta now like, my, my barber sends me referrals, FYI, you know, and, and, oh, yeah. you know, but now I got to think of like, who are the other people now that, that I'm missing out on, right. That I'm not asking for business from, you know, there's definitely a, a, a lot of them that I'm, I'm just, I haven't had that conversation with, you know, they know there's what a, I do. There's a lot of them. Passively, you know? Yeah. I mean, my, my barber sends me referrals. She sends me agents <laughs> because think about it, you know, there's a half hour where we're sitting down and we're just catching up you know, and I want to make deposits in that relationship. And so I've sent a lot of, you know, I've sent people to her too. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a golden opportunity. Think about it. The funny thing about a hairstylist is look at how many people they know and they work with in a week and they're sitting them down talking to them. You know what I mean? They are relation, they are in a relationship based business. Yep. So that one's easy. That one's a no brainer. So Jeremy, I think, I think with that being said, I think you just inspired this week's challenge, right? This week. Yeah. Well, tell me what it is. Cause I got to bounce, but I want to hear it. Well, raise your hand. If you got to get a haircut within the next week or two. I mean, I know I do, right. I'm going to get a haircut or, or some of the ladies are going to get their hair done. I got a couple more weeks to go. <laughs> so that's the challenge, whether it's your hairstylist or whether it's someone you're going to go visit. The challenge now is the next time you see them to have that conversation and say like, hey, you know, I'm, I know I may, may have not mentioned this to you before, but, you know, I really want to, you know, make sure our relationship is fruitful. I want to refer more clients to you. Start by giving, right? I want to refer more people to you. And, and are you accepting new clients? And then vice versa. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm looking for. This is my ideal client or my ideal candidate. You know, let's, let's maybe help each other out and help each other grow our businesses. So that's the challenge is to have that conversation with someone, whether it's your barber your whatever you're the person that you're going to go you know meet or you're going to exchange money with is to just have that conversation and just plant that seed and then watch what's going to happen the next time you see them it's going to be like something you're going to keep talking about or they're going to ask you how's business or whatever and it's just eventually it'll turn into to something um so that that's my challenge i'm gonna i gotta i gotta figure out who that person is on my list and i gotta have that conversation with them Love it. Uh, good stuff, Jeremy. I appreciate your time, bro. Right. I know you got to get running, but thank you. Thank you for the, the insight. Right, and the wisdom, Jeremy, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Let's catch up. Yep, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Uh, guys, so let's go around the room. Like, who's the person that you're going to, that you can talk to right now? Who's someone that you need to talk to and, and tell about your business? Like someone you know that's in your circle, that's influential, that knows a bunch of people, right? Like, I mean, yeah, for me, I mean, it looks like it probably looks like I don't have a barber, but I do. Uh, but you know, so definitely, my barber, my barber also cuts my son's hair, guys. So we go to we go at least every two weeks. But yeah, I think I think that's huge. I mean, just just actually just role playing that that conversation, I think, is important, right? Not just you know, just actually role playing just exactly what Enrique was saying, like, hey, listen, I want to bring more opportunity, more clients to you. And, you know, in turn, that's, you know, I, you know, I, I would like the same. And, and I think what happens is the next time you go see that, that person, they're going to be like, oh, shit, man, this guy's going to be asking for that referral. I better have, you know, somebody in mind or have some, some type of opportunity for them. Right. Um, so I think, I think that that's huge because we go through our day-to-day -day life and Everyone is an opportunity and it may not just be that person. It may be someone they know. Right. So I think that is important to understand is, is just letting people know what you're doing, how you're willing to help, how you're going to be helping people out and see if you can help any of their, anyone in their sphere. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, who else, who else has a person in mind? Like who, who, Miguel, who do you have in mind, bro? Who's someone you need to have that conversation with? 
believe it or not, I did this uh, a while back because of the Brian Buffini system, like the mayor campaign, you know, ask those people that you're in a relationship with or do business with, uh, would you feel comfortable using me or referring me? And one of those people is um, actually my house cleaner. She only comes like once a month to, to do like a deep cleaning, but we've kept her on for years. And uh, I started asking her those questions and she said, oh yeah, my son, he, he's a pilot. I think he, he's interested in buying a house. And I, you know, obviously I nurtured it, nurtured it uh, for about six, eight months. Then I finally connected with him when the time was right, when she uh, connected us. And he's an escrow right now for a house uh, for 720,000 uh, because of that. And I'm doing the same thing with a friend of mine who owns a gym. She's got a ton of relationships. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not at the gym right now because my schedule doesn't allow it, but I'm itching to get back in there just to stay top of mind with her because I'm her go-to realtor, but I don't want to lose that relationship by not going and being a part of that, you know, supporting her gym. So go, uh, it, works. it works. It works. It works. Now think about this, right? Think about you're asking, you're, you're nurturing that relationship, but you're also adding them on social media and you're also doing videos, right? Yeah. Which just further ingrains your credibility, right? It further builds your credibility. Because yeah, you talk to them and you tell them you're, you know, you're in real estate and like, hey, you know, this is what I do. But now when they see it in action and they see the content you're putting out and they see you posting consistently, it's like now indirectly you're 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 proving to them that you're you're someone that they can refer business to, right? So it all goes together, guys. Like my barber has sent me several clients, but that's because we talk about business and we're also on social media. He's also on social media. I'm always supporting his stuff. Anytime he posts a cool video, I share his video on my stories. You know, I did a podcast with him. I invited him onto my podcast, right? To like talk about him and his business. And indirectly, he's already sent me several clients, right? Just because like I helped him get more eyes on his business. So it's one of those things where the more that you give to someone, it's going to come in return, you know, naturally. You know, so it, it's, it's awesome that, that you guys are, you're, you're able to do that. Um, let's see who else we got. Um, Hervin, who's that person you need to have a conversation with? Um, it's an old friend of mine. He was like the first person that popped up in, into my mind. He he's actually pretty, he's growing like really fast on social and he has his own clothing brand. And, uh, we used to collab back in the day too. So he's like the very first person, super well connected in my, you know, my, my city, South San Francisco. So I think the bare minimum that I need to do just to kind of respect that, that uh, friendship and relationship is to buy more of his, well, to buy his stuff, right? Show support, right? Shout him out, stuff like that. And then just catch up with them. Cause um, before I, I had my license, but I wasn't in real estate, wasn't practicing. He ended up buying a house, right? But he never shouted out his realtor. He's always liking my stuff, commenting my stuff. So I think I could just come in there and uh, start basically, uh, yeah, re-sparking that friendship and see where it goes. There we go, bro. There we go. You, you know, people who are active like that, they know a ton of people, you know. Uh, let's get one more. Um, Z, who's the person you need to talk to? Uh, probably my hairstylist. She... I actually helped her buy a house. We're in contract right now, but uh, she hasn't sent me any referrals. So <laughs> I need to get her on that because she has like 10,000 Instagram followers and she's super popular. So I guess that's maybe you, I, I guess I never think about like you have to educate people and, and tell them that you want the referrals. And I, and with all of like the stuff that I'm posting all the time, I know I, I'm, people think like I'm really busy. Um, so they might think I'm too busy. So I want to make sure people know I'm never too busy for your referrals. <laughs> <laughs> I like that slogan. You just made that up. <laughs> That's like the Intero thing. Yeah, That's I, like know. They all push. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh. So think about this, right? Your hairstylist, how can you maybe support her business, right? Like I would go and say like, hey, you've been my hairstylist for a long time. I know you got all these clients. Like, I would love to maybe do some sort of content or some sort of video with you, you know, where I could shout you out and we can help each other both, you know, gain exposure because now she will be exposed to the people that follow you. And then you will be exposed to the people that follow her. 
and she has a lot more followers, right? So that's actually a, a, going to be a, a solid win for you. So, um, you know, think about it that way, right? Like when, when a lot of people do these like uh, small business spotlights or stuff like that, that's really what it is. It's about like you jumping into people's circle and, and kind of that cross exposure. So you can have fun with it and you can utilize social media and then the videos live on forever. Like awesome. Um, let's see. So let's, uh, let's, let's kind of shift gears a little bit. We were talking about systems and then we got onto this, uh, this kick of, you know, the relationship building, which is awesome. Um, what are some other systems you guys are doing or maybe some other systems you're having trouble building or you want to implement into your business or something that's working really well for you uh, or something that you need to do? Let's, let's, what questions do you guys have or what input can you guys give? En Enrique, re really quick. I, I mean, I was, I was listening to Jeremy and one thing that I liked, and you and I have done this before is that, that um, delegate and elevate, which I think is important because what happens is once you know what you want to delegate, then you're going to want to design a system around that, right? So it kind of kind of plays into it. But I think that was a good, a huge game changer for you and I, where, you know, we kind of just sat down all the tasks, everything we're, you know, our, our day to day, and then we see what we can get off of our plate. And, when, and then we started developing systems or finding systems around, you know, what we wanted to kind of get off, get off our plate. And I think that's, it's an important exercise which I know Enrique and I would be, we, we would do that every quarter to see what we can continue to kind of get off of our plate, hand over to, to get automated or put into some type of system. So I definitely think that's a great exercise. If you guys haven't done it, I would highly, highly recommend doing something like that. No, that, that is a great system. And I actually just, if you just Google uh, delegate and elevate, you'll see a worksheet. I found one right now that I'll share on my screen. Um, but basically this is what it looks like. So it's basically four quadrants and this comes from the uh, EOS system, the entrepreneur operating system, which is a good, it's a good uh, system to follow. But basically it's four quadrants where you kind of write down the different things, right? So the first one is like what you love and what you're great at, right? So what you love to do that you're also really good at, maybe what you like to do that you're good at. So if you don't really love it, you're just you know kind of okay with it. And then you start looking at the don't like that stuff that you don't like to do that you're good at and the stuff that you don't like to do and you're not good at, right? So um, you can do this for your business, but then you can also do this for your personal life, right? Like for me, um, laundry is gonna go on like this bottom right hand corner, right? I don't like doing laundry and I'm not good at that, right? <laughs> um, so that's something like right off the bat that I wanna delegate out, I wanna outsource, I pay someone to come pick up my laundry and go do my laundry and bring it back folded. Right. Because for me like that, I hate doing it. Right. It's just something I just feel like is a waste of time for me. And that time that I save, I can be using that time to do other things like work on my business or spend more time with my family or whatever it might be. So this can work in two ways, guys, not only just your business, but your personal life. So um, I'll share a link to this in the chat, but I would really uh, take the time you know, spend a good 30 minutes, at least just really going deep on this and maybe do two of them, one for business, one for personal. And then from there, you can formulate your plan, right? You can look at like, what things do I have to take off my plate? Um, or is there someone that I can delegate this to either in my organization or someone I can outsource this to so that I can spend more time, you know, doing the things in these top two quadrants, right? The top two quadrants is where you should spend the majority of your time. Like Jeremy was saying, you know, 75 to 80% of your time. And I think a good thing to do is look at your day-to-day -day for a week and see what you can apply this with, right? I'll give you guys an example. I've seen, you know, stories online where I've seen real estate agents asking like, you know, do you know a good place I can go make a key? You know, I'm, and it's like, for me, that is not like a dollar producing activity for a high level agent to go walk into Home Depot, make the key, go back to the house, put the lockbox on. So that would be something immediately that I would say, if you're doing something like that on the day to day, you're going to want to find a way to delegate something so that you're not having to spend you an, an hour or an hour and a half doing that process. Yep. Has anybody ever used... Uh... Task Rabbit. Do you guys know what that is? 
So I think TaskRabbit, it's like an, it's basically an app where you can pay people to do little miscellaneous tasks. It's almost like a, like a DoorDash or whatever for, for small tasks. And you can put a task on there and you can say, all right, I need someone to go pick this up and go drop it off over here. And I'm going to pay 20 bucks. And people can basically pick up those tasks and do it for you. Um, I haven't personally used it, but I know someone told me about this before. I'm, I'm sure you can look it up and, and, and check out the app. But guys, it's like now when you start thinking about it that way, right? <laughs> like, damn, what? there's a ton of stuff I could probably just get off my plate where I can pay someone. And while they're doing that, I'm over here doing this, the stuff that I love and the stuff that's going to, you know, be more dollar productive or the stuff that I'm going to get just more joy out of, you know, in the first place. Um, okay. So while we're on this tangent, like what's something in your business that you just completely hate doing? Like what's, <laughs> what's the thing that's the most tedious for you? Like, man, I, if it was up to me, I'd have someone do this for me all day. Tracking. <laughs> Tracking. Tracking your numbers. Just like all the, all like the, like the, just the whole thing, just tracking everything. It's like, I hate doing it, but I do do it. I'm, just, I'm patient with it, take my time with it. But that's something I would definitely delegate out. Just have some track for me and I'll move on to something else. Not, not just numbers, though, like basically like the whole uh, hand response and all that stuff. Basically, about something like that. But, so, so what, what's the solution around that, right? Like, if you think about it that way, right? This is a good, this is a good, a good exercise is obviously we know why it's important to track your numbers and, and do our can responses and have a lead management policy, but you got two options. Basically you, you bite the bullet and you do it yourself. Right. And you, you know, you say, all right, this is a necessary evil or you get good and you make enough money where you can pay someone else to do it for you. Those are basically your two options. I'm working on that right now, man. <laughs> right? I'm buying like, the bullet now, but I'm going to end up paying someone. But, um, but either way, to pay someone, you're still going to have to report what they have to track for you, right? So it's like you're still going to have to tell them what needs to be tracked. So by the time you tell them or you got to email them, it's like you already kind of tracked yourself, right? So uh, I don't know. You got to think about that, man. You got to think about can you have someone else do that for you? Or you can, you can look at it in a different way also. You can say, you know what? I am choosing to track because I know that what's gonna take my business to the next level is me knowing exactly what's happening in my business on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Like I need to rearrange my mindset around tracking and say, you know what? I'm gonna be the number one tracker in the office. Like I'm going to know everything I do. I'm going to know like how many leads it takes for me to book an appointment. I'm going to know how many calls it takes. Like I'm going to know my business inside and out because then at that point I can get more efficient or I can cut certain things out or I can go all in on certain things. And that's going to take my business from this production to this production. You know, so when the reward is big enough, right? or when the pain is big enough, the pain of not doing something is big enough, you will do it, right? Yeah, no, I think that's actually a, a better mindset to have as opposed to, I hate doing it. It's like, this is actually gonna elevate my business. Yeah. So I think the best option is just change the mindset. Thanks, bro. Yeah, I mean, it, in business, guys, we, we got to, if you want the, if you want to have the things that most people don't have, you got to do the things that most people don't do. That's just the bottom line. Right. Um, and that means doing certain things that you don't like doing. Now I would challenge you to don't let that be your whole day. Right. Like maybe you say, because I really don't like tracking, I'm going to just have this half an hour and I got half an hour to track everything I've done that day. And that's it. You know, cause now you're only giving yourself a short time frame, and you're like, it's do or die, get it done, get everything in. This way I can like hurry up and get off my plate and I can go focus on the things that I love doing, right? Um, I was talking to someone yesterday, I think it was Brian and I gave him a, you know, some accountability, like he had to go in and clean up his CRM. And I was saying, you know, when, uh, obviously it was a big task, he has like 180 leads in there, he has to go and sort through. And I'm like, so 
He's like, all right, I'll get it done. And I'm like, all right, well, when are you gonna get it done? He's like, probably by next week. And I'm like, well, if I give you till, ne if you give yourself till next week to get this done, then it's gonna take you a whole week to get it done, right? And I go, no, let's put some accountability. We don't, we don't wanna spread a two hour task over a week, right? Like, it's like, no, like, let's get it done today, right? Or let's get it done by tomorrow, or let's set a deadline of when that's gonna be done. Because if you only give yourself two hours to do it, then you're gonna do it in two hours, right? It's like, if you give yourself all day to, to clean your room, it's gonna take you all day, right? So I think we have to play that game with ourselves sometimes, right? And if, if you are not strong enough, strong-willed enough to play that game with yourself, find an accountability partner. Find someone that can hold you accountable, right? Because oftentimes we'll set, we'll set tasks for ourselves and it's like, we're the only ones holding ourselves accountable. So if it doesn't happen, eh, it doesn't happen, right? Like there's no, there's no penalty, there's no consequence. But the minute you like get Jason involved and you're like, Jason, I need you to hold me accountable. If I don't do this by tomorrow, I got to shave my head or I got to do this, or I owe you 500 bucks or whatever it might, whatever the rule you want to put around it, like you're going to do it at that point because now there's someone else involved, right? So uh, we got to put ourselves in those uncom uncomfortable situations if we want to elevate our game. Got it, man. Really good feedback. Thank you. No problem. All right, let's go. Uh, what's something in your business that you hate doing? <laughs> You mean besides like this, Jose? By the way, you mean besides like cold calling or following up with people? Yeah, I guess what's so, what's something like that is necessary in your business, <clears> but you just like it's just not the your favorite thing to do. I think with me, it, it's um, you know I work with my wife as a, as a team, but mostly it's it's me that's been you know um, working on our business and that kind of thing. So I think it's a lot of uh uh pri prioritizing and also um keeping track right like you know the the accountability of um keeping track of like the follow-up system right a lead comes in and maybe they'll call me on the phone i'll talk to them like oh yeah i'll send out an email with information or we'll set up a zoom call and that kind of thing but um sometime i don't have like a system in place like how they were talking about earlier where you know, lead comes in and they get an automatic, you know, text message or email or voicemail and that kind of thing. So um, I think it's more of having a more robust CRM, I think, for me. Yeah, I mean, there's two things to what you said right there. Um, number one is, is taking the time to build out the system while you're still running your business, right? That's a challenge yeah. right there in itself because oftentimes we're gonna give priority to like the client that's right in front of us, right? right. So what, what we've been trained and, and coached on is that you have to break things down into like quarterly and monthly uh, projects that you're doing in your business. And you gotta look at your business that way because there's a bunch of things that we can work on and implement, but if you try to do them all, like you're not gonna do any of them at a high level. So. What is recommended is that every quarter you maybe jot down three things. It could be two things, right? Two or three systems. And you say, okay, this quarter, these are the two or three projects that I'm going to work on. And then you got to put time in your schedule of when you're going to work on them, right? So if you can allocate, you know, two hours in your week or three hours in your week, maybe you, you, you split those up. Maybe Mondays at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m that's when you work on that project. And then Fridays, you work on that project, you know, for that hour. And it's a strategic basically way to kind of get this thing and, and, you know, keep going at it so that by the time the quarter's done or the month's done or two months are done, you already got this system in place. Um, and sometimes if it's a big project that you're trying to implement, it may carry on to the next quarter, right? But if you look at it just at its simplest form, Let's just say you were, you were picking two projects to work on every quarter. That's four quarters in the year times two. That's eight projects you could have implemented or eight systems you could have implemented into your business in a whole year, right? 
That's how you scale your business. That's how you take your business to another level by slowly implementing systems at a deep level. And when you implement those systems, it's not just setting it up. You now got to execute on it and you all got to practice it daily, daily, daily. Um, like with us, you know, like implementing our, our video, like us doing videos, it's something that every week we're talking about videos. Every week we're talking about videos. It isn't like one meeting, we talk about videos and then that's it. I already know in my mind, it's gonna take a good six months of me just drilling this every single week and you know practicing it and holding people accountable before people start to do it naturally. So um, I would encourage you to maybe just time block and then really chunk your business down you know, you could look at the whole year and you could say this quarter, we're doing these two things, this quarter, these two things. And then you put the plan in place. Um, and, and Jose, and Jose, I mean, this is Jason. So again, Enrique and I have done this for the last few years and we've seen, we've seen the, uh, the progress of it. And one of the biggest mistakes we did in the beginning is we went too wide, meaning we try to implement too many things at one time. Right. And so we, you know, what, what, what helped us is that we just took two or three things and there's two of us. So we're, you know, he would take two, I would take one or two and we just went really deep into that system and, and started implementing it, holding people accountable. Enrique and I would hold each other accountable to certain milestones with, with we would call them rocks to make sure those rocks were completed. Uh, but yeah, I would say, cause there's so many things you're gonna, you're gonna be overwhelmed. If you look at your business and you're like, holy shit, there's so much, where do I start? Yeah. Well, you know, it start on immediately, you know, I would say definitely a, a lead management policy, uh, you know, how the lead comes in and just go really deep with your CRM and whichever CRM you're using, they have support where they will go ahead and you're not the only one that's in this situation, Jose. So they will probably have a solution around, around their CRM. And just my advice is just pick two or three and just go extremely deep, not wide on it. Yep. Cool. Thank um, you guys. Appreciate it. For any of you guys, um, that are not, you know, in our organization, uh, send me an email after or hit me up and I'll, I'll give you a copy of our lead management policy, right? It's just basically a document that I put together where I broke it all down. What happens to the lead when it comes in? What happens when it goes to the CRM? What's the follow-up? How do we tag it? How do we categorize it? What do we do if it's a buyer lead? What do we do if they say they're not ready now and they need to be nurtured? So we broke it all down. And every time we bring a new agent on, they have to read and understand that lead management policy, right? That's the first step. And then they have to implement it, which is going to take them some time of doing it over and over before they finally understand the whole entire process, right? So I can give you the list and then you can customize it or tailor it to fit, you know, whatever you're doing. Um, so yeah, that's, and it's, I think that's the first step, right? Is you, you have to write everything down first. You know, and then when you write it down, then you can now go into your CRM or if you're using just a checklist, whatever it might be, you don't necessarily need a CRM. You just need a place where you can check things off. The CRM does make it uh, easier because it could do a lot of stuff for you. So if you're, if you're bringing in leads at a high level, um, I would definitely recommend some sort of CRM that's going to do a lot of those things for you where you can set it and, and kind of forget it or stuff is automated. Definitely. Uh, let's go, guys. It's 1059. Um, any closing questions? We're going to get wrapped up. Anything on your mind right now? Something you need help with? A challenge? A system? And then we'll wrap this up. Hi, Enrique. I would love to see a schedule of a top producer. Like, what are their daily activities? Maybe a calendar? everything they're doing, because I just want to copy that. Absolutely. Um, I can share, I can send you kind of a schedule that we put together. Um, honestly, it's nothing fancy. I think uh, it, it's nothing fancy that we do. It's more about consistency. Um, for our team, what we do is Monday through Thursday, we hold the whole team accountable to be in at a certain time, to make calls at a certain time, to do training at a certain time. So I'll give you an example of what our Monday through Thursday looks like. Uh, 9 a.m. we show up to the office from 9 to 9.30, we're doing role play. 
So we're, we're role playing on some sort of script or something, whether it's buyer, seller, or some sort of, you know, issue. And then for about two hours in the morning after that, we're on the phones, basically we call it new business development time, right? So it's protected time. You shouldn't be working on offers. You shouldn't be working on emails. You should just be on the phones, making contacts, following up with your leads, calling people, basically trying to drum up some business. Um, then after that, you know, the afternoon time is you're, you're doing, you know, lunch, you have appointments in the afternoon. If there's a training on that specific day, we do training. And then once again, in the evening time from four to six, we have a second call session. So uh, we're on the phones again and we're prospecting again. We're following up with leads, the same exact thing we did in the morning. And basically the rule is if you're not on an appointment, if you're not making business happen, writing an offer or anything like, or showing a home, then you have to be in those prospecting sessions. The only excuse to not be in those prospecting sessions is because you're on an appointment, you know, you're closing a deal, you're doing something like that. You're not working on emails, you're not putting out fires. That should be done during the middle, you know, in between those two sessions. Um, so what we have found is that by controlling that Monday through Thursday and kind of having that, that structure, and then letting our team kind of dictate their schedule on the weekends because they're going to have appointments, showings, anything like that. We're basically kind of controlling like, you know, 60, 70% of the week, you know, and if you do that every week, everything else kind of falls in place, right? Appointments are set. There's people they're going to meet with. There's homes they're going to show. And that's honestly, it's, it's, it's you know, I wish I can tell you it was like something crazy, but it's not. It's just, it's more of just consistency. The hard part is when you're doing this on your own. That's the hard part. I think uh, if, if, you're, if you're on your own and there's no one like that's doing it with you or there's no one you got to report to or there's no one like, hey, where are you at? And it's up to you. It's easy to like get distracted or pulled in a different direction. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, just to kind of go a little deeper in that, I think uh, it's important, Amy, I mean, even, even for myself, I've been doing this for 18 years and I try to lead by example. And for me, I like being in the office. I like being around the team, but it's just, you know, it's, it's as simple as just being consistent. I don't know, Amy, if you have a team or you're a solo agent, but again, you know, we have a good culture in the office where we're holding everyone accountable. I mean, when they set an appointment, they're ringing the bell. So again, maybe one person's energy may not be at a high level, but once they come into the office, it brings them up because other people around them are having success or, or can get feed that positive energy. So definitely, you know, I would recommend surrounding yourself around a good group of people if you can, uh, or definitely just set a set up a schedule and start early in the morning and just start, just start executing, you know, definitely, you know, again, we call it new business development, uh, prospecting call session, you know, we, we also start at that nine o'clock. We also do a positive focus. So very similar to what we do in the beginning of this call is we just kind of go around the room, spend 10 minutes and give something positive, whether it's whether it's uh, business or or uh, more personal. So, yeah, just it's it's nothing fancy. It's just a lot of consistency. Great. That was very helpful. And Enrique, I'll probably ask you on email to for you to write that down. I'm sorry, I'm driving. So I wasn't able to like note it, but that sounds great. A structure and consistency. Got it. Yeah, definitely. I have, um, I have it already in a chart so I can just send it over to you. So anytime we onboard a new agent, it's already a template. That's a system right there, right? It's like created a template already that just goes to every new agent. So it's like, Hey, read this. This is exactly what you got to do. And this is the schedule that you're going to follow. And no one follows the schedule hundred percent. It's not perfect, right? Because things come up, you know, what have you. Um, but the key is to try to be on that schedule as best as possible, right? So if you're hitting that schedule, you know, at least the 80% or higher, you're going to get business. Even if you're like the worst prospector, you suck on the phone, whatever it might be. But just by you being there and making the effort, you're going to get something. Something's going to come up. You know, and over time, as you develop your skills and you get better at, 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 you know, speaking to people and qualifying people, 
and you have that foundation of the schedule, then it's only going to get easier, right? So that's how we've been able to, to really turn brand new agents or even agents who are a little seasoned into successful agents, agents who are stuck in a rut where they have the skills, they're, they know what they're doing. It's just more of now we put a schedule and a structure that they have to stick with. You know, so by default, you put those things together and it's like, that's where the magic happens. So um, shoot me a message offline, Amy. I'll shoot you over that, that, that template and you can take a look at it. Yeah. Number one last thing, guys, is that especially if you're building a team, you're definitely going to want to have that. And you're definitely going to want to introduce that in the interview, letting them know that, hey, listen, this is what the expectation is. This is what the accountability is going to look like. Are you good if I hold you accountable to this schedule? And if they say yes, they're good to go. If they ask you, you know, when, when's vacation and how much they get paid and what days they get paid on vacation, that's a no. You don't want them. <laughs> you got to earn those days off, guys. Um, and, and guys, not everyone is built for real estate, right? Like not everyone is built for this. And if you look at any top producer, you know, doesn't matter how long they've been in the business, they have certain things that they do every single day. It may look a little different. The times may be a little different, but there's certain things that are staples in their business that happen on a daily basis, right? What you got to do is you got to figure out what are those four or five things that I should be doing. And anybody who's, who's a, a producing agent, it should be setting an appointment, going on an appointment, you know, putting together a deal, right? Negotiating a deal. And if you're not doing any of those, then you go back to setting appointments again, right? Like that's, those are the most dollar productive activities that, that any agent can do. Everything else, guys, as, as, as much as you think it's important, it's not that important, right? Like you can pay someone to do it. You can leverage it. You can outsource it. You, you can maybe you know, time block a little bit of time, but the most important things for us to do is to just to generate new business. Um, that's, that's a sales job, right? That's what we're in. Um, so let's leave it at that guys. Hopefully you guys got some, uh, some nuggets today. Our challenge this week guys is that person you got to talk to this week that is influential, someone that knows a lot of people, someone you exchange money with, your barber, your CPA, your buddy who's big on social media, whoever it might be, is you need to connect with them and you need to say, hey, I wanna build a relationship. I wanna build a better relationship with you. I wanna help support your business. You know, Hopefully you can help support mine. This is what I'm looking for. What are you looking for? Let's see how we can work together and, and, and bring each other up. Have that conversation. Let people know that you are accepting new clients. Don't just assume that they know you need referrals, right? So that's the challenge. Talk to one person this week, build that relationship, rehash that relationship, rekindle that relationship. Next week, we're gonna report back to see who did it. We good? All right, guys, have a great okay. week. Hit me up on the side if you need anything. I'll get some of that stuff out to you. Hey guys, let's go.